It is a pleasure to have a dear friend, a family friend on the program, Ambassador David Freeman. He was President Trump's ambassador to Israel from the United States, where all kinds of great things were accomplished from a relatively small group of individuals, including Ambassador Freeman. David, it's an honor and a pleasure to have you on the program. And I got to tell you, this movie that you and Pompeo and others have put together, Route 60, The Biblical Highway, um, I saw the uh, six, six and a half minute clip. I played it on my uh, Levin TV, Blaze TV program. I was spellbound by it. And uh, I wanted you to come on the program and talk about this a little bit because I think people need this. I think people are sick and tired of what's going on. I think they need a movie like this. And I can tell you on Tuesday, I believe you're going to be showing it to a limited number of people at the Bible Museum, and members of my family will be attending it. That's how important I think it is. In any event, how are you? And tell us about this. Mark, hi, thanks. It's great to be with you, and thank you for your, uh, for your kind words. So uh, I'll tell you why we, we made this movie. You know, when I got into government in uh, 2017, uh, one of the things I wanted to do as a diplomat was to explore uh, Judea and Samaria. You know, the, the place that most of the world calls the West Bank, but, you know, uh, Israel calls it Judea and Samaria, and theologically it's referred to as Judea and Samaria. I wanted to see it because it is the diplomatically, diplomatically the most sensitive uh, part uh, of Israel. It's, it's an area which, you know, there, there are many uh, disputes relating to it. I wanted to go there and see it and talk to the people, and the State Department said to me, absolutely not. You know, it was off limits to any American diplomat. Uh, and I, I didn't understand why. You know, I'm, I'm, a, uh, I'm a diplomat. I'm trying to, you know, resolve problems. I can't even go there. And what I uncovered was that there was this intentional self-imposed ignorance by the State Department uh, on the, uh, about this crucial, you know, crucial area that somehow we would offend people if we traveled there and spoke to the 500,000 Israelis that live there or, or the Palestinians that live there. And so um, I broke that mold uh, pretty early on, and I traveled there. When, when Mike Pompeo became Secretary of State, uh, he endorsed that policy, and we traveled there together. And what we found there was, was so compelling and so important, and we wanted to bring it to, to a much larger audience. We wanted to bring it to the world because, you know, most people think of uh, this, you know, this strip of land, you know, 6,000 miles away called the West Bank, and they think it's just a, a street fight between Israelis and Palestinians that's been going on for 100 years. Well, it's not. It's the land of the Bible. It's the land where Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, uh, you know, Moses, King David, Jesus, where they walked, where they preached, where they ruled, um, where all of the biblical wisdom comes from, um, you know, where, you know, truths that are enduring, values that are, that are enduring and authentic and that have, you know, animated our, the founders of our country to, you know, to, to write the Declaration of Independence, you know, it's all there in this area that nobody wants to look at, nobody wants to talk about, except just consider it some real estate dispute. And it's so much more. And so Mike and I, we went on this, you know, we call it Route 60 because the, um, it's the biblical spine of Israel. Route 60 is the road from Nazareth to Beersheba, and it is the road upon which or within, you know, a few uh, kilometers in any direction where almost all the great stories of the Bible take place. And we went from place to place to place, you know, against the advice of all the great, uh, the great pundits, you know, we went there uh, from place to place and we brought it, you know, to a, we brought it to, to a larger audience, hopefully to a very large audience. And it's not political. You know, we're not looking to, you know, tell people how to resolve the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Well, what, we were, what we're asking them to do is just to care about this area. You know, people should care about Judea and Samaria. It is where the Bible was born. It's where the Christian faith was born. It's where the Jewish faith was born. It's where our Judeo-Christian values were born. And you have the opportunity, you know, through this film, or hopefully one day through, you know, traveling there, you know, to put yourself back in time into the shoes of our greatest biblical heroes, to relive the great, you know, events of the Bible. And, and I'm telling you, you know, as, as somebody who studied the Bible my entire life, you know, studying the Bible is great, reading the Bible is great, but living the Bible, you know, walking that path is incredibly powerful. It, now, David takes, Friedman, we're going to take a break. Yeah. I want to bring you back. But before we go, if people want to find this movie, where do they go? They go to Route 60, R-O-U-T-E, the number 60, dot movie. And they can put in their zip code, find out what theater is playing it, and buy tickets. 
Well, it's a pleasure to have Ambassador David Freeman, the ambassador to Israel from the United States, probably the most successful ambassador in that part of the world in history. The movie is Route or Route 60. Uh, you can take a look at Route60.movie. You can enter your zip code and find out what theater it's playing in. I want to strongly encourage you to view it, uh, even if you're just curious. Now, uh, David Friedman, your father was a rabbi. You've been to Israel four billion times. You know that country almost like the back of your hand. And yet you said something earlier in the interview that was intriguing to me. Did you learn some new things in the course of you and Mike Pompeo really narrating what is this movie and the walk through these different uh, historic religious sites and so forth? Yeah, I did. I did because, you know, um, some of these places just are so off the beaten path and they don't get the attention they deserve. You know, I, I got to see something I'd never seen before. And you're right. I've been there a billion times. Uh, I got to visit the altar of Joshua when Joshua brought the Jewish nation across the Jordan River at the very earliest stages of the Jewish nation. He built an altar and he wrote his own Ten Commandments and he prayed to God. And, you know, that's that's still there. Now it's it's on the side of a mountain. There's no signage. There's no uh, there's no access. You have to really hard to get to. But uh, we, we went to a bunch of places like that because we had extraordinary access because, you know, Pompeo and I got the security details and help from the Israeli government because they wanted us to film it. So we got to see things and bring things to the audience that you really don't see on your on your typical tours. And I learned a lot. And, you know, I'll tell you, Mark, of, of, uh, I, I think, you know, to, to, in, in synopsis, that what's best about this thing is that when you go to a place like this, you read, you know, all kinds of Bible stories as a kid and you, you learn it as an adult and you study it. But being there, you know, being there on the ground where the events took place, where your biblical heroes actually, you know, performed the, the miracles that are attributed to them. It really takes, you know, all these stories from the world of legend, from the world of myth, and it brings them into a world of truth. And, um, and, and that inspiration that I gained from being there is something I hope we can bring to our audience. You know, I'm embarrassed to say, but it's so true. The first time I went to Israel, I was 60 years old. And the second time I went to Israel is at your invitation uh, with the uh, mm-hmm. embassy in Jerusalem. Yes. And we went with our family. We went the first time, you know, 11 or 12 of us trucked over there. And I can remember just going to the city of David and touching the steps, touching things and saying, oh, my Lord, the people who walked here. And so it's, it's real. So your point is people yep. haven't been there. It really is real. And that's what you get out of this movie, right? You do. That's exactly. And, and the city of David is very prominently featured in this film. It's it's it just it actually happened. And when you can you know feel that and touch it, it it brings to you almost you almost you know shudder at the, at the reality that's thrust upon you. The fact that the Bible really happened. The the archaeologists and the scientists and the theologians are all in the same place uh, when it comes to uh, these biblical events, and it's it's enormously inspiring. Of course, you talk about a lot of places in this film. You visit a lot of them. You, t- you explain them in plain English. It's really quite compelling and intriguing. And in the clip that you see, uh, that I've posted, that you sent me, a lot about Hebron. Who was buried in yeah. Hebron? Uh, only uh, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, and Leah. So the, the, three, the, the three patriarchs three out of the four matriarchs, the fourth Rachel, is buried somewhere else. And we visit her tomb as well in this film. Her, her, her Rachel's gr- uh, grave is very meaningful to many people. It's a source of very fervent prayer. Uh, look, it's, it's right there in the, in the book of Genesis. You know, the, the story is told about how Abraham was looking for a place to bury his wife, Sarah. And he, and he met someone and he negotiated with him and he bought a place. And he created a, a burial cave for, him, for his wife and he himself was buried there. And then it's progeny. So, you know, and, it, and it's and it's it's right there. The, the, the tombs are right there. And um, and the history is unassailable. Isn't it amazing that all three of the main faiths, starting with Judaism, then Christianity, then Islam, count Abraham as really the father of their faiths? Yeah, they do. They're all called the Abrahamic faiths. And, and, and by the way, they're. They're all welcome in, in Hebron, and, and they do come to Hebron. In, in the 
the structure that was built by King Herod 2,000 years ago to encapsulate this, this tomb is still in pretty good shape. It's still intact for 2,000 years. It's almost the only building that was built uh, 2,000 years ago that wasn't destroyed because all the faiths have such respect for this place. Of course, the flip side of it is that, you know, our country uh, and, and so many others around the world think that Israel should just surrender that territory to, to, to hostile enemies who the first thing they do when they control it is to destroy it, as they've destroyed so many other uh, holy sites within the Judaism and Christianity. So um, I hope that when people see this, they say, gee, this is an important place. We hope it's preserved for eternity for our children, grandchildren, and progeny. The only way to do that is to allow uh, Israel to be the custodian of these places. And uh, Israel's the only country in 2,000 years that's afforded access to these holy sites to all to all faiths or people of no faith. I mean, it's it's the only solution to uh, our ability to preserve these holy sites. Fantastic movie here. Route 60, dot movie. Type in your, your zip code. You'll find out where a theater is near you. That's Route 60. And 60 is numerical. 60, dot movie. Route 60, dot movie. Type in your, your zip code. Now, I want to ask you a few questions on current events. Having nothing to do with the movie. Sure. Everybody should sure. see the movie. I'm watching, Mr. Ambassador, the Biden administration basically unraveling everything the Trump administration did in the Middle East. They keep talking about a two-state solution. They're now funding the Palestinians, even those who commit active atrocities, not just against Israelis, but Americans. Uh, you see what's happened now uh, when it comes to efforts. People, you wanted to expand the Abraham Accords which is simply not going to happen right now. And they're even talking down Netanyahu's attempt to to build a strong alliance with Saudi Arabia because Thomas Friedman and Biden and, and the reprobates he surrounds himself with, they only want a deal that kind of forces Israel not to take action against Iran. What do you make of all this? Well, I think it's been one mistake over another. And, it, and it's been tragic because, you know, when, when we left office, um, uh, one, one of the high, highlights of the Trump administration was the Middle East and what progress had been made. And you're right, he's, he's unraveling it. Look, the interference by the Biden administration in Israel's internal affairs is unprecedented. And look, it's been done before by other governments, but it's never been done to this extent. You know that they're having a, um, a, a New Year's toast, a Jewish New Year's toast at the, at the ambassador. There's no ambassador now, but the ambassadors, uh, uh, whoever is in charge now, is having a, a, a party there. In a couple of days, you know, they won't invite uh, Israel's um, uh, minister of finance because they don't like his politics. They won't invite him to a, to a, to a social event because they don't like his politics. Um, you know, Netanyahu still hasn't been invited to the White House, um, even though he's a duly elected, you know, uh, 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 prime minister of Israel, one of America's most loyal friends for, I don't know, almost 20 years. Um, he can't get an invitation to the White House. I mean, I'm not concerned about the discourtesy to Netanyahu because he's a big boy. He can handle that. But the signal it sends across the globe is that the United States is opposed to the Israeli government. And and that just invites all kinds of um, mischief and mayhem among Israel's enemies. So, yeah, it's it's it, I don't know where they think they're going to succeed here because it's just uh, everything's heading in the wrong direction. Um, and uh, I, I mean, it's deeply frustrating to me as somebody who committed uh, four years of my life and frankly i'm still committed to it and i was committed to it before it's um it, it's all wrong the whole everything is 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 wrong i mean the, i think and i think you know it's what's odd, oddly enough i think even the the arab countries are scratching their heads about about biden i mean they actually said more i should say more than that many of the arab countries really are, are are deeply offended by biden's embrace of iran i mean they can't they can't understand it but but this this idea that you know america is going to continue to fund malign behavior by Palestinians. I don't know if you saw um, what the um, what, what president of the Palestinian Authority just said a couple of days ago, Prime Minister, um, you know, President uh, Mahmoud Abbas. He said that the um, he said that Hitler wasn't anti-Semitic. Uh, he gave a speech, a public speech. He said Hitler was not anti-Semitic. He only killed Jews because he disapproved of their financial practices. And and this is a guy who just got a half a billion dollars in aid from the United States. Uh, so, you know, I, I don't know what to make of it. it it's, it's, so, it's so offensive and so counterproductive and so 
you know, is so likely to lead to to a bad outcome. Um, I, I just hope it ends. It ends. It can't can't end soon enough. The problem is, of course, Iran is uh, now breakneck speed. It's going to have a nuclear weapon if they're not stopped. The Biden administration seems to accept that outcome, but wants to rejigger, re-engineer, reorganize the entire Middle East in some uh, fanciful, idiotic way. Uh, and, of course, they feel that Israel stands in the way, in my opinion. And they hate Netanyahu because they know Lapid and the minority parties over there will pretty much do whatever the Biden administration wants them to do. And Lapid even comes to the United States to lobby against the elected government there. And I want people in this country to understand, they're not right-wingers. These are, we would consider them right of center. We would consider Netanyahu right of center. We wouldn't consider him a Barry Goldwater. He's right of center. And he negotiates and he works out the deals and so forth, but it's not good enough for them, is it, Mr. Ambassador? No, I, I, I don't understand what they, what they want from Netanyahu. I, I just don't understand what more he needs to do. Um, you know, Tom Friedman writes these. I mean, think about what Tom Friedman wrote the other day. He writes that America should stop dealing. He, he writes that America should stop dealing with Netanyahu because his interests are contrary to those of America. He says that in the, in, you know, that you know the, the discussion between uh, the Palestinians and and Biden and uh, MBS in Saudi Arabia and Netanyahu of those four players, the only one who's morally uh, infirm is Netanyahu. He's the bad guy. You know, mm-hmm. the guy the guy who claims that the Hitler wasn't anti Semitic, yeah, it's, talk to him. You negotiate with him, that's fine. But Netanyahu, who only, you know, is the longest serving prime minister in Israel's history, who who, who brought the GDP per capita from, you know, twelve thousand to fifty thousand dollars, you know, in you know, made 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 Israel a, a, you know, the, the envy of the world in terms of its technological advancements. I mean the guy's done nothing but but build Israel into a, a first world, a first rate country. And and Tom Friedman says, this is the guy you have to box out. You know, don't let him in, in the room. That'd be the same Tom Friedman who praised communist China a few years back and their government because they could get things done, Mr. Ambassador. And he's done that on more than one occasion. And his background is really uh, quite disastrous, as was pointed out in a great piece and commentary a few years back. All right, so the movie, folks, is Route 60, R-O-U-T-E 60 dot movie. It'll be on all the social sites, and you type in your uh, your your uh, zip code, and it'll tell you where you can see the movie. I want to encourage you to do it. It's 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 entertaining, but not in a stupid way. It's entertaining because you're looking at it. It's historic. You're learning so much. It's a family uh, adventure. You put all this other stuff behind you, and it really is incredible. And I want to thank you for doing this, David. It's really a fantastic movie, and on Tuesday you'll see some of my family there watching it with you. <laughs> well, it, it, it was a labor of love, and we'll, we'll, we'll be good to your, uh, to your family. I'm sorry you can't be there. I know you're busy. But uh, we, it was a labor of love. And God bless to your beautiful family. Thank you. Appreciate all right, it. brother. Take care of yourself. Check out that movie, folks. It really is uh, going to be a fantastic. It is a fantastic movie. It'll be a, a wonderful event for you to attend again. If you want to know specifics, go to MarkLevinShow.com and all the other social sites I have. Uh, and I think it's very important uh, that the ambassador was able to talk about it.